Welcome to another edition of Caribbean Moms Podcast. I am your host, Laura Dowridge Phillips, and today we are focusing on nutrition. We are going to be talking about how to raise happy, healthy children and how nutrition plays a role in that. The CaribbeanMoms.com podcast brought to you by the Sunny Flavored Water. Stay hydrated with a healthier, sugar-free option of flavored water while you're on the go. Experience a burst of apple, Portugal, or grapefruit flavor. I am joined by two beautiful ladies, Nandini Samuels and Josan Singh, and they are from Rainbow Nutrition. Ladies, welcome to Caribbean Moms Podcast, and tell us a little bit about yourselves and your organization. Yes, thank you for having us. Um, Rainbow Nutrition is basically, uh, we both of us own um, this organization. So we started it like two years ago, and it's, it's for... Um, not just adults, but kids as well. Only last year, we started to look at kids especially. So we released a book on um, diabetes and kids. So it's basically to help um, form a healthy lifestyle. And not just that, but to ensure that kids kids and adults are happy as well. So I would leave you that now. Also, um, we are both registered dietitians. So we are registered on the board. And yeah, as Nandini said, we both started this organization like two years ago. <clears throat> and it's not just for adults, it's also for kids as well. And we try to do some outreach work as well. So we try to do things and give back to the community as well. Nice, lovely. So great, you all are perfect for our discussion today. So we are talking about nutrition and the role that it plays in, in developing happy and healthy children. Um, How important is nutrition where that is concerned, Nandini? I think nutrition in general has a profound influence on young kids because let's say it's just the foundation. It's the foundation, like just how you would need a foundation in a home. It's the foundation for them to grow and be happy and healthy since that's the team, right? This includes decreasing um, the risk of diseases. It helps with their mood changes, maintaining, let's say, a healthy weight. So we want to always try from like a very young age to introduce them to this type of lifestyle. It also helps while research is showing that it helps to stabilize moods and even sharpen their minds. So I was looking at this um, study recently and in, in, it would, was with European countries. And what they did was a study with 7,000 plus kids over a two year trial period. And happy and healthy kids or not just that but good nutrition has been shown to be beneficial to academic performances mm. so i think is is important very very essential to start it at a very young age so explain to me nandini yeah. what exactly is nutrition so there are there are parents out there we hear about nutrition 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 what exactly does it mean what and what constitutes good or bad nutrition Okay, to me and being a dietitian for almost four years now, I think nutrition is having a healthy, well-balanced diet with a variety of foods. So it's not just that you're focusing on one particular food or you're focusing on fruits and vegetables only. You want to give them a variety. And in addition to that, you want to focus on physical activity as well. So nutrition is just, I, I look at it from a perspective of health-related quality of life. So it's not just you're focusing on, let's say, eating health. You want to look at the mind, having a, a, a proper mental health, having a proper emotional well-being. Because as a child, they go through so many emotions, so many changes, especially if there are problems at home. So we want to also take all these aspects into consideration okay. and not just nutrition. So to me, yeah, nutrition is just having a variety of the, the essential foods in the diets. Okay, so when it comes to children, it's really a holistic thing we're looking at it's is just not one thing we look at. yeah yes that's yes. that's important to know okay so you know as a parent um and, and many parents could relate one of the biggest challenges is how do you get your children to eat healthy balanced <laughs> have healthy balanced food i mean children right uh, you know when i remember with my kids um just introducing them to to solids and they refused to eat carrots you know you had to play around with what foods they would like and one they would eat something as babies and then by the time they reach three four you cannot get them to eat it at all so i mean my children are only now have two elder sons in their teens and they only now eaten tomatoes they hated it before so how do you right. so how do you and i'll pitch this question to josan how do you get children to eat properly 
to eat the foods that are healthy that may not be you know they're not they're not salty and sugary and 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 sexy how do you get them to eat to eat these foods all right so i think um firstly it starts with the parents the parents is the most important part there in terms of what each child eats but if the child is picky um a parent could actually try to mask the vegetables or the fruits into different foods so for example um if the child doesn't like pumpkin you could try maybe put any pumpkin in the peas and beans instead so when it melts away the child not necessarily see any pumpkin or taste any pumpkin but it's there Oh, that's interesting. So we sneak it in. Yeah, so you're basically sneaking ah, it in for them. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Also, also children like drinks, so like maybe making smoothies and sneaking in a vegetable there as well. You could easily sneak in some kale or even like spinach leaves, carrots, those sorts of things into smoothies. Right. And I know like one of the, the battles all parents have is snacks. Um, from the yeah. moment, you know, sometimes you wonder, okay, what is the right age to introduce my, my children to, to snacks? Um, and not, not always, it's not always fruit. Sometimes they go to a birthday party and they get the first taste of a pack of corn curls and that's it. They're hooked for life. You know, what a, what is an appropriate <laughs> age to introduce your children to snacks and how do you manage that, that the whole snacking thing, how do you manage their palate when it comes to these things, Nandini? Okay, so I think it's important to not just look at an age group for introducing snacks because it can be introduced as soon as, let's say, one or two years old, right? Because, I mean, they would see things, they would see persons, um, children around them having things, and they would want to have it as well. But what I think um, parents especially need to look at is when they go to the grocery, sh grocery shop or store, you want to look at nutrition facts labels. The American Heart Association actually says that children should not have more than six teaspoons of added sugar for the day. And this can happen in just one chocolate bar, especially here in Trinidad, is a, a lot of young children are developing diabetes, what we call type 2 diabetes. So they are, um, because of the increase or the risk in, in obesity, they are having a higher risk of non-communicable diseases or chronic diseases, type wow. 2 diabetes being the most common one. So it's wow. essential. So yes, you, 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 are, you are introducing them to snacks, but be mindful of the types of snack and how much you are giving them. So of course, when it comes to school, how do you manage that? What do you, <laughs> I think that is every parent's challenge. What do you give your children to eat? Because children want to be cool in front of their peers. They want to, they don't want to carry something that nobody else carrying. I mean, you know, children will just not eat anything you put in their lunch kit because they, they're too busy playing. And then they, they, if everybody is buying food, they want to be able to buy food. Or they just want to fit in. So Josan, how do, as a parent, do you manage their nutrition when it comes to packing this lunch kit? How do you manage that? So it depends on the age group, right? So the younger ones, for example, you can try to make the fruits and vegetables fun to eat. So simple things like cutting it into fun shapes, you know, little stars or circles and those things. So it makes it more attractive for them to eat it. And in terms of making it cool now, they are now carrying fruits and vegetables that are in these fun shapes. So they will look cool to their peers and might even encourage their friends as well to want to eat fruits and vegetables. Yes. So make it into like little faces and those older, kind of things. Yes, anything they like or even pair it with something that they might like. So, you know, like carrots with some sort of dip, like a hummus dip, if the child would be willing to try it or maybe hummus into a flavor that they would like. And you could also sneak in a vegetable into the hummus itself as well now and give them regular okay. chips, a low salt one, obviously. So now they're eating something that they accustomed to which is the chips and you're introducing a new food into it that is a bit healthier so that's that's good advice what's what are some some alternatives what are some 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 sort of healthy snack that you could advise parents to pack outside of the fruits and vegetables what else is there that you know that might be healthy and good for the child i think a lot of times there are some um well, looking at the options we have now, they are actually chocolates and wafers without sugar added to them. So it's usually catered for diabetics. But we also want to look at um, granola. Granola, I see a lot of granola on the market with no sugar now. 
So all these things are alternative, even if it means that you give them. I we recently had Kampadi Diabetes Association. I saw that the kids are eating yogurts. I was shocked because I mean, at that age, I was not eating yogurt, right? So they were eating the yogurt and we sprinkled some granola on top of it mm-hmm. and they were happy to eat it. So I think it's just trying to introduce new foods gradually and you're not giving them all at once, yeah. one thing at a time. So so besides the wafers, the, the chocolates, all those things with low sugar, you want to try more nutrient-dense foods. So besides, let's look away from the fruits and vegetables. I think popcorn, um, like unsalted popcorn with all the sugar on it is a good alternative. Nuts is also a good alternative, like almonds and cashews, peanuts. But of course, with, with no salt or no, not honey roasted. Mm-hmm. And then we could do, well, s- smoothies. We could also do like some milkshakes and so on okay. without including fruits and vegetables if they don't want it. Because, I mean, at that age, calcium is important. As you grow older, you need the protein, you need calcium. So having some sort of milk drink, let's say, um, even if it's a chocolate milkshake and you use 100% cocoa powder instead of chocolate mm. is a good alternative for them. Okay, yeah. and that's important. As I, uh, When you were talking, as you mentioned, um, calcium, I was thinking, are there specific things that children need growing up? Are there specific yeah. vitamins, specific um, nutrients that they, their bodies must have to help them develop? Yes, definitely. So as you are growing older, your needs increase and every child is different. So it's not like, let's say you would give my children something and your children something that is similar. All of their needs are different. So that's why we tend to see them on an individual basis. So there's need for protein for growth. Obviously, we need sufficient protein and we get protein sources from our peas and beans, um, our meats and so on. Of course, we want to give them lean sources of meats like the chicken breast. Mm -hmm. and not just the ones with high fat in them. Because again, we are looking at the obesity standpoint or the unhealthy lifestyle standpoint, right? We also want to look at calcium for bones and teeth, um, fluoride for teeth, and also iron is important for red blood cells and so on. So we need to to make sure that, as I said at the beginning, we want to have some sort of variety in the diet. So Josanne and I always look at the Caribbean six food groups. And I mean, a lot of parents don't know that there's a six food group, right? So it comprises of staple. Yeah, it comprises of staples, legumes, food from animals, fruits, vegetables, and fats and oils. And we try as much as possible to get all these six groups into their daily meals. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner should comprise of a staple, some sort of protein, and a vegetable. So let's say, for instance, on a morning, I mean, in Trinidad, doubles are so common. You're going to give your child a doubles to carry to school sometime, right? In a case like that, we use the doubles, Shana, but give them a whole wheat hops with a cucumber mm. on the side. Or we could even do like, let's say some of them like tuna. We do a tuna or chicken peas, but we ensure to add the lettuce or let's say grated carrots, what I do especially, I do cheese paste as well with them. So I take spinach or probably um, carrots or beets, blend it in for the different colors. Mm. So because they are different colors, they find it attractive and they will eat it. Interesting. So they would say, yeah, I would like the pink one or the orange one or the green one. Because of the different colors, they would want to eat for, eat it for breakfast. Let's say lunch, we always try to do the staples, protein and veg, as I said. So we could have like, something like, let's say... um pasta with beans and some chicken breast grilled on his side or even if they like barbecue chicken strips right. but we ensure to keep the balance throughout and dinner could be something similar like a whole wheat wrap um with vegetable like with a chicken stew fry in it so it's simple things but it's important to make these changes early so once you introduce them at a very early age you know that later on in life they are going to adapt to these changes regardless Now, you know, people talk about, you know, things so expensive these days and there's this notion that eating healthy, eating balanced is expensive. And it's so funny. I I saw a meme, I saw a video today where a guy who had bought a coffee at at a coffee house and he was, it was so much money. It was like $79. He paid for it and he said, you know, I could buy, I could make a decent meal out of $79. And he went to grocery and he bought chicken, um, peas, rice and cucumbers. And you should look, I right. made a nutritious meal. So t- talk to us about that, Josanne, about does it have to break the bank to eat healthy, balanced, nutritious meals? Absolutely not. I mean, y- you can use your budget and simple things like going to the market instead of going to some of the bigger grocery stores. 
and looking around. Shopping around is important. Different vendors will have different prices for their items. And 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 good things as well is to eat what's in season. Usually when things are in season, they tend to be a bit cheaper than when they're not in season. So eat seasonally as well. And in terms of getting children as well to eat healthy and budget friendly as well, you can encourage them to have little kitchen gardens as well. So when they are part of that process, they may be more inclined as well to actually eat some of the foods that they are growing themselves. Mm, that makes sense. And we spoke about giving children smoothies. What about water? Um, you know, some children, a lot of children prefer juice over water any day. But how important it is for your child, how important is water as part of that balanced diet and, and how important it is for a child's body to have enough water? So water is very important in terms of hydration and they're children, so they're going in school and they're playing all day. They might be in the hot sun as well during playtime. So it's very important that they stay hydrated and especially with water. And sometimes children may not want to drink water. And so you have to find creative ways now to try to encourage them to drink more water. And one way that you can encourage them now is have bottle, get them like a reusable bottle, something that's fun, colorful, maybe with like a nice print on it and encourage them to fill that bottle every day and drink some of it. Right. That's important. Um, how would and you... just to add to what Joe's, sorry, just to add to what Joe's I was saying, I think a lot of kids I see them using, like parents um, doing slices of fruits and vegetables, adding it to the water. So let's say you add probably um, a couple slices of orange or you want to put probably some strawberries in the water just to make it a different color. Or right. even, and you are also in, you are also increasing the nutritional benefits from that water as well. Right. So it's important to try to try as much as possible, as Josanne said, to find creative ways to introduce them to that. And 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 really, a lot of it stems from us as parents. So if I can't tell my children to eat properly, if I don't want to eat properly, yeah, yeah. So it basically, That's exactly what happens. <laughs> so yeah. I can't be eating doubles every morning, but buffing you up for not eating um, yeah. your vegetables. Yeah, because eventually they are going to say, Mommy, I saw you doing that, so I could do it too. <laughs> so basically, it's, it's really the whole family has to be a part of the process. Yes, and you also don't want to force your children into eating their vegetables or fruits as well, because then it becomes something negative to them. So it's important not mm -hmm. to force them and say, you know, sit here and you need to eat these vegetables before you leave the table. It, that is discouraged because you will now create a negative relationship to those foods for these children. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the telltale signs that your child is not getting a proper nutrition? Okay, so I think one of the most important signs is their mood changes. You see that they, their mood is different. So sometimes they are extremely sad and tired they are very mm. tired um you see some in some cases you see that their if it's a lack of calcium you see their nails are brittle you see the white spots on their nails you also some of them even get hair loss in the cases of major deficiencies where they start oh, wow. throwing up and all those things so in cases with malnutrition well you would see severe stuff like um hospitalization oh, yeah wow. but the main changes at first it would be their mood changes Right. As a first sign as a parent, you should realize, recognize that if your child mood is changes, there must be something besides that if they are going through something at school or regardless of the case, it can be related to the diet as well. And should you be concerned as a parent if your child eats a lot? Like I find boys are always hungry, always hungry. <laughs> It is impossible <laughs> to keep food in your house when you have boys. So is that something that should concern parents or is that just, just their metabolism? And how do you, if you have children who are always hungry, they're always eating, what do you, what advice do you give to parents to, to, to make sure that they in the constant eating that they eat properly? Okay, I think again, it would be having a well-balanced diet. But then we have, I, I wouldn't call them greedy, but... At the same point in time, they want to have everything and anything that everybody is eating. So the, the, it will be of a concern if they are overeating, but because again, this can lead to obesity. So once you see, let's say, the darkening of the behind of the neck, especially you as parents, if you 
already have diabetes within the family. Mm -hmm. You want to be mindful that your child could get it at a very early age. So there's where overeating would be an issue for me. Um, So we would want to encourage nutrient-dense foods instead of the energy-dense foods. So let's say instead of potato chips, you want to give them Yes, the fruits and vegetables, because you would get nutrients in those. The potato chips, you're just going to get energy, no nutrients whatsoever. You want to keep the food at smaller portions, um, attractive, obviously, but we want to probably give them, look at serving sizes at that instant. Right. So give them things that will keep them fuller for longer. Let's say our fibers and our protein. Protein and fiber is shown to help them keep um, fuller for a longer period. So fiber would be like, let's say, our brown rice or whole wheat pasta or fruits and vegetables has fiber in them. So they wouldn't feel as hungry if they just eaten, let's say, rice alone, right? Um, some sort of fried rice alone. You want to always keep the plate balanced. So I have had issues where children are overeating and because we change the diet so much, so to a well-balanced diet where we have staples, protein and vegetables, as I mentioned earlier, the child started to eat within that serving size and not just mm, beyond. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so it's important to always balance the meals. And I mean, Josan could add to that as well. Yeah. So that could be one way to look at it as well. But also if the child is very active, you know, playing a lot of sports, so even just playing a lot as well, they would naturally have a higher metabolism as well. And they would probably be eating more. So as Nandini mentioned, it will, in that case, you don't restrict them. You just make sure and monitor them and try to give them more of the nutrient dense foods as opposed to the energy dense foods that's where you're sure that they're getting proper nutrition and it's not just a lot of empty calories that they're consuming right um my sons play football so they're very active and one of the things i discovered this term is that they constantly kept getting cramps after after their games so somebody told me so some right. people advised me let them eat more spinach let them eat more bananas um, so the, the type of food they consume, I guess, would change depending on their level of activities. Yes, definitely. In terms of the electrolytes in your case, especially because there would be a decrease in electrolytes after playtime. So we would recommend like the bananas for potassium to increase the potassium or something as simple as coconut water. Mm-hmm. A lot of them tend to have the Gatorade mm-hmm. right after just the balance of the electrolytes because okay. it would increase cramping. Right. Now, one of the things that concerns me when it comes to children and food, I mean, you don't want to, especially if you have a child who is obese, um, how do you manage with their their nutrition, but at the same time, manage their self-esteem? Because you don't want a child to feel, well, something has to be wrong with me, um, and you make them go on this diet, and you don't want them to develop negative self-images, you know, body images. How How do you manage that? I think firstly, not using words like you're going on a diet and things like that. You don't tell the child those sorts of mm-hmm. things. You don't tell them that they need to lose weight and whatnot. You make small adjustments to how they currently eat so that it's not a drastic change that you're putting on them all at once because you don't right. want to stress that child out as well. And they would obviously pick up on little cues if you move what they're accustomed to and change it drastically into, let's say, a plate of salad alone. So you have to introduce small changes over a period of time until eventually the child is eating more balanced and also incorporating a little bit more physical activity in that case and not just sending the child to a gym and giving the child an instructor, you know. <laughs> yeah. Get, find a hobby that the child might like, you know, um, whether it's swimming or playing cricket, something along those lines so the child doesn't feel that he or she is being forced into this way of life to lose weight per se. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is major because of negative self-image will just derail the whole process anyway. And that will affect them in the long term as well. It doesn't just affect them immediately in that period of time. They would take this into their um, teenage years as well as into their adulthood as well. Yeah. And how important is it to, when you're encouraging nutrition, and we spoke about this, about it being a whole holistic process, how important is it to have family meals together rather than every man fend for themselves and eat whenever? 
<laughs> I think it's very, very, um, it ver- it's very, very important because what hap- what we see happening with children, they tend to eat what the parents are eating. So as you mentioned earlier, if they see that you are eating, let's say fried chicken or KFC, they want that as well. Mm-hmm. And even when you sit as a family and you have that sort of team around you, you are going to, and you are eating healthy as a parent, the child is going to follow the same thing. So they are, they, they, let's say they never ate vegetables before. And yes. they see the parent is eating it. They might want to try it because they find it looks interesting. So eating as a family or together, even if the family is not always available, meaning that the both parents are not always available, at least if one parent or the older sibling could stay with that child, it's important to have a company when eating. Yeah. As And also eating in front of devices. So you know a lot of children, they're always on the devices, on the phones, in front of computers. And it's just so easy for them to just eat have a meal in front of that. Is that something we should be encouraging as parents? I was now going to touch on that as well <laughs> because that contributes towards something we call mindless eating. And that's where children or even like adults, you might sit and when you're watching, uh, you're consumed by a show or your device, you tend to overeat and you won't feel that fullness immediately or like one time you would continue to eat and binge eat. So that's why it's important as well, the family time and sitting together and eating as opposed to eating in front of your devices. Yeah. Yeah, because I see that happening a lot. Eh? It, it, right, it's really mindless eating. I remember somebody telling me once, if you're eating and watching TV, you're watching TV. You're not eating. Yeah. <laughs> because you're not aware that you're actually consuming anything. It's just... So I guess as parents, we really have to break some of our bad habits so that we can ensure our children don't inherit them <laughs> yes i agree Lord. Yeah. And, and and you know in trinidad we a lot of our popular foods are fried or you know very greasy um and 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 these are the foods that you know they taste so good so it's not that we say that children could never have these things right but we have to learn to balance it everything in moderation everything in moderation exactly because I mean, a lot of kids, even besides the actual foods, they see donuts all the time on the streets or selling. They want donuts every day. I always tell them, yes, you could have it, but one at a time. You're not going to eat four or five at a time. You eat the smallest one. You're not going to eat donuts every single day either. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be like an incentive if you do something, or, or we use it sometimes as a positive incentive. So if let's say you eat your vegetables today or i mean josan also sp- spoke about the negative um impacts you don't want to create no negative impact but we can use it as a positive in- incentive if you eat you- whatever today you get a donut in the evening yeah yeah but we don't use it all the time because i was looking at um this video as well they're saying that if it is you continue giving them that sort of incentive they will depend on it so you have to know when to use it and how to use it yeah, because they will always say, well, maybe if I do this, I would get a donut later. Right. Yeah? Oh, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so, ladies, anything else you want parents to know when it comes to ha- raising happy, healthy children and the role that nutrition plays in that process? I think it's important to know your child at a very young age, meaning that you know their likes, their dislikes. You try as much as possible to include foods that they don't like in creative ways. So as Josan mentioned earlier, you want to hide the fruits and vegetables. I saw like kids hated cauliflower at a point in time. We blended the cauliflower into macaroni pie mm-hmm. and they started to eat the macaroni pie be- only because it was hidden, right? So it's important to try to get the nutrients within their daily basis. I don't tell parents to use supplements at all. Okay. Supplements is not important if it is you are giving your child a healthy, well-balanced diet. The only way you are using supplements, let's say something as a simple multivitamin, like a gummy or something like that is fine. But in terms of going to buy specific nutrient supplements, if mm-hmm. not recommended or prescribed by a doctor, then don't do it. It's important okay. to try to have that healthy, well-balanced diet throughout. Limit um, high sugar, fruits, um, snacks and drinks so when you go to the grocery as parents we want to learn to use the nutrition labels know how to use the caribbean six food groups especially and introduce new foods gradually and aim as i said before aim for the staples protein and vegetables at each meal 
let's say you give them breakfast and make sure that they eat on time so let's say you give them breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning at 10 or for recess you want to give them a nutrient then snack even if it means like it's an oatmeal cookie you make with them at home you're not going to use sugar you could use bananas to sweeten it there's so many recipes to use on youtube now um even if it's like a banana muffin you could mm. give them muffins for snack as well then lunchtime they would have their balanced meal as well when they come home from school they are not going to eat the same thing as lunch they are going to eat a snack a healthy snack and then you give them dinner so it's mm. important what i realize a lot of our parents do as well is when it is they eat um whatever foods at lunch they give them a smaller portion when they come home from school mm. so if they eat pilau at lunch when they come home they get a smaller portion of pilau for snack so we have to discourage this type of meal pattern okay. yeah so i mean i would leave Josan now so before Josan speaks just um what if you have a child who doesn't like to eat first thing in the morning and so they don't Who want breakfast. Not. Yeah, they don't like to eat first thing in the morning. They don't want breakfast. So their their first meal might be at lunch. No, well, in the cases like this, we have to find some sort of alternative solution to encourage them to eat, even if it means that they like things that they like, like meaning like if they like cornflakes and milk or cereal and milk, you try to give them the cereal and milk, but you give them ones with lower sugar in it. You give them low fat milk or strawberry flavored milk that's lower in sugar. Mm -hmm. than regular full cream milk so you try to find out what they like and create some sort of pattern around that and ensure that they have some sort of breakfast before going to school because breakfast as, as many of you know that um it have been shown to be beneficial to academic performance as well okay yes Josan. so what anything else you would like um our listeners to take away from this discussion Yes, in terms of parents, I believe it is very important to educate yourselves. If you know what needs to be done in terms of proper nutrition for your children, or even like doing research on ways to encourage them and improve their healthy eating lifestyle, that's something that parents need to take that, um, that step towards because what you do influences your child at that age. They are now learning and mm -hmm. you are an important part of that. So it's a really important for parents, especially to educate themselves. And as Nandini mentioned, you know, reading the food labels, that's definitely something that should be practiced because that's how you determine when something is too high in like, let's say saturated fat or even the added mm -hmm. sugars as well. So you would now know which of the snack items or which of the food items should be sometimes foods and not an everyday food. So it's important that little aspect plays a very important role in how a child would eat. That's excellent, excellent advice, ladies. Um, this has been a very informative discussion. Um, I really hope our listeners take something away because eating properly is a battle for adults. <laughs> and of course, as we have said before, it influences how our children eat. And we really want our children to be strong and healthy and happy and performing well in school and performing well on the field and in play. So I really hope some of these tips, I'm definitely going to try that mask in the food thing with my kids because I don't know how else to get them to eat vegetables. So I will definitely try masking, hiding some vegetables in some food, some of their favorite foods and see how that works. But I thank you so much for your time and for being here with us today. I hope you guys listening really learned something. I hope you got some good information to walk away with. So, you know, you've been listening to another edition of Caribbean Moms Podcast. Thank you for joining us. The CaribbeanMoms.com podcast brought to you by the Sunny Flavored Water. Stay hydrated with a healthier sugar-free option of flavored water while you're on the go. Experience a burst of apple, Portugal or grapefruit flavor.